One of the things that I, I've been doing a lot more of is honoring and owning my truth, whether or not it's comfortable or works for others. I want the peace and the prosperity. I don't want to choose. Mm. So you said you think balance is bullshit. Balance is total bullshit. Talk to me about that. We're not taught to be intentional about what fills our cup back up. We date other people all the time, but we never think, let me date and nurture myself. I'm not saying it's not worth it. I'm saying how it's marketed is trash. It's yeah. basura. Don't nobody give a damn about your website. This little pretty website don't mean nothing. People worried about recognition versus revenue. Exactly. You have to show a much larger view of what is possible. It doesn't have to only be this one way because people was making money before an Instagram or a Facebook or a Twitter or a YouTube. And you're also a mama. Yes, straight I milk out here in these Let's streets. Oh, yeah. we dropping all types of gems inside. Baby, legs is closed and crossed. All the men in my life are obsessed and excited to aid in, in my growth and happiness. I love that. That's the energy. That's the affirmation for all of y'all out there. <laughs> Affirm it, say it often. <laughs> yes, put a post it on your mirror. Let's Listen. go. Listen. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Banking on Cultura, where we talk about the vibrancy and complexity of Latino culture, entrepreneurship, and of course, all the bonchincha in between. Now today, honey, make sure your edges is down. <laughs> make sure you are ready because we gonna get a nice blend. Hennessy mixed with some tea <laughs> and it's gonna be raw, super authentic. You know how we like to do on Banking on Cultura. But my guest today, I love spending time with her because she is just so, oh, the energy just hit different. And she's <laughs> so freaking smart. And I've learned so much from her and I know she's going to drop so many gems today. And I just want to welcome you. Thank you so much for being on, Alicia. No, thank you for having me. I love intimate conversations. I like being able to be my natural, raw self. Because, yes. y'all, I have tried to be better. It's just, it's who I am. Uh, and I, I appreciate when folks are are welcoming and, and accepting of that. So, thank you. Yeah, totally. So, Alicia Reese, introduce yourself to the people. Ooh, chow. <laughs> it's so funny. Every time someone asks me that, I have to kind of go through like, okay, which right, part which of me? Right, which persona do I want to represent today? <laughs> yes, because there are so <laughs> many. Um, but I will say, um, just in general, I truly am like warm tea and Hennessy. Uh, it depends on uh, what, what we need at that moment. Um, but I am an international host. I am a transformation coach. I help folks leveraging and utilizing strategy to build lives that feel as good as they look. Yes, and you're also a mama. Yes, straight I am milf a out here in these Listen, streets. Ew. Okay, okay. <laughs> so we have a lot of things to chat about today. Yes. And quite frankly, when I was preparing for this, I was like, damn, which angle I want to go with first? You see, it's the octopus <laughs> for me. It's, it's like, the octopus. Which way I want to go with first? Um, so let's start with the bonchinche. Ooh. So tell me, tell us some bonchinche. So I think the one of the things that I, I've been doing a lot more of is honoring and owning my truth, whether or not it's comfortable or works for others. Hmm. And so a little bit of, you know, a little, little bit, a little, little sprinkle is I really dislike or I've been really having a difficult time with how motherhood, marriage and everything in between is marketed to us. From the time we can understand and watch a Disney movie, it's like there's this Prince Charming who's going to come and solve all your problems, and you're going to become a mother, and it's going to be the most beautiful thing ever, and you're going to ride off into the sunset, and it's all going to be great, and it's like, that's some bullshit. Mm. I don't know. I believe in the fairy tale. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Somebody going to come and whisk me off my feet okay, and offer me all the things. Okay. You don't, you don't think it's possible? You're dealing with humans. So what? Humans gone human. Humans gone human, but yeah, it's not going to be everything's going to be in the clouds and peaches and cream. You're going to have your disagreements, but I mean. But how it's positioned and marketed is not that. Mm. What's positioned and marketed is the wedding. What is not positioned and marketed or hardly ever even talked about is the marriage. 
The marriage is the piece in part that you want to make sure that you prepare for. What are our values? How do we fight? What happens when I'm mad at you and we can't just stay up all night and talk through it? Like what happens when you become someone because you are ever evolving? Just like you're changing every day, so is your partner. What happens when we evolve into certain versions of ourselves that I fucking hate? I hate this version of you. Mm. I don't know how long this shit gonna last, but I gotta sit here and stick through it even though I don't like you right now. Mm. That piece in part, nobody has that conversation. What happens when your sex drive is on 10 and mine is on two? Am I outsourcing as this <laughs> <laughs> this, this uh, ever so eloquent dude was suggesting not we do? Outsourcing. On, on, now, now, I'm not saying I would do that, but that is something mm. that men are suggesting and I have loads of guy friends who do believe that like if my wife is going through a period where she does not want to have sex and not because she's sick just because she's going through a phase is it okay that we outsource that we switch some some stuff up while we figure our things out marriage marriage be hard Kev on stage and his wife are very right marriage is not something that's this fairy tale you are dealing with a human who literally is going to go through every single piece and part and transition and challenge and triumph of life and you're doing it with that person mm. that's some hard shit that's not a uh, prince charming on a horse coming to kiss you to wake you up out your sleep mm. i'm not saying it's not worth it I'm saying how it's marketed is trash. It's yeah. basura. It's unrealistic. Unrealistic. And so you have women and men who go into these very unrealistic situations and, and partnerships and think like, okay, she is going to cook for me, clean for me. She's going to suck and fuck any and every time I want her to. She is going to be able to take care of the children. She is also going to be able to work her job and excel and go through the ranks or build her business while also providing and giving me 100% of herself. How? Right. We're How? being false marketed to for what the standard should be for men and what the standard should be for women. And I think it's unrealistic on both parts. So we gonna get more into this during the talk that talk segment, but I this also translates to a professional setting Absolutely. because there's also inaccurate marketing going down, unrealistic expectations yeah. for both women and men. And the work that you do, you work with executives and leaders mm -hmm. to really push them to figure out how can they truly live a divine, happy, joyful life yeah. and also kill it professionally? Absolutely, because I'm a believer we got to do both. Like, mm -hmm. I want the peace and the prosperity. I don't want to choose. Mm. I do not want to choose. Is that realistic? I believe that one takes a lot more intention and you don't always have them both at the same time, if I'm being very honest. Because just like... Um, I don't believe in balance. I, I feel like balance is bullshit. But you have to understand that there are things that have different priorities at different phases and stages in your life. And being intentional and explaining that to the people who are closest to you or the people who are your tribe or your community or your partners or your children is something that many of us don't know how to do because we haven't been taught how to do so. Mm. Like I am a single mother and I only mean single as in I'm not legally married to someone. My tribe is the best to ever do it. So I am not alone, even though I am a single mother. But even with my child, because I speak all over the world, at literally, I just told you my travel schedule for the next, what, month. I'm in a different place every other two days. Right. There's no way to do that without explaining to my child, hey, this is something that I love so much that I enjoy and I will not be able to be the best mother for you if I never do what I enjoy. So summers for me are my time. I allow her to go with her dad for the summer. They have the best time. They enjoy themselves and I get to be free as a jaybird doing all the things that nurture and fill my cup so that then when I get her back because I have her, you know, the, the rest of the year, the entire school year, it's okay. I've, I've I filled my cup so well, I'm right. able to serve her from, from a, a full place. And even when my cup is starting to dwindle with her, I tell her, hey, mommy's going to go do this because I have to take time for me too, the peace and the prosperity. I let the right hand do one thing, which is focused on the peace for me because peace is primary for me and I'm right handed. So it's my primary. And then the other hand is the prosperity because that matters to me too. Mm. So, yeah, it's tough. Yeah, it's tough. 
Totally. So you said you think balance is bullshit. Balance is total bullshit. Talk to me about that. In order for something to be balanced, it has to weigh the same. Mm -hmm. By definition. Like we ain't even, this isn't an opinion. This is by definition. So there's no need to, you know, shout us out in the comments. (laughs) (laughs) By definition, in order for something to be balanced, it has to weigh the same. There is no way you can tell me that your child weighs the same as your job. Or your partner weighs the same as your friends. That is inaccurate. Yourself weighs the same as your job. That's just not, they don't weigh the same. Mm -hmm. But what I do believe in is prioritization depending on the stage and phase of life you're in. So one of my really, really dope, amazing executive coaching clients, she is a high ranking official. Right. And so one of the things that we were discussing is we went through what's your entire schedule for the day? What's your entire schedule for the day? And we went through each part of each hour of her day from the time she gets up and picks up that phone because she said that's the first thing that she does to when she finally lays down in the bed and picks up her phone again because that's the last thing she does. Which time in there is intentionally set for you? And then what's the goal that you want? Her goal was simple. I just want to be able to spend an hour of my day only doing what I want to do. Hmm. Okay, bet. how do we set that up? What does that look like? What supports do you need? No, We're not taught to be intentional about what fills our cup back up. One time a week, she has to go and I call it playing. I call it playing. We date all, we date other people all the time and I firmly believe in dating. We're going to talk about that later too. <laughs> um, but we date other people all the time, but we never think, let me date and nurture myself. I'm so good now at nurturing me that I'm able to, even when I date, because I'm single till I'm married, so I date all the, all the people. Um, <laughs> even when I'm dating them, I'm able to quickly define and see, does this person work for me? Does Do they align with what I know I need simply because I'm so good at providing for myself what I know I need in order to thrive? So let's talk about that because... Yeah. I truly believe for you to get intentional about mm-hmm. you, that mm-hmm. takes process. And that, Absolutely. that is a journey. Yes. So what was that journey like for you and how did you get here to set these kind of in this kind of intention? I got low as fuck. Like like low twerking low or like yeah, low, uh, I do that too. <laughs> but no. Um just really, really low in how I felt about myself, my sense of self worth, um, my sense of self love. Like I was in a really low, deep, dark place. Like kind of like the belly of the whale for those who have ever read the story of Jonah. Um it was just such a dark place and I was just like well, what happens if I make a different decision and I keep making a different decision and I decide to focus my attention elsewhere and when things still get hard and I still have to cry and I still go through really, really dark moments and spaces and places, what happens if I have better tools to be able to dig myself out quicker so I'm not in deep depression for six months, maybe it's a wave that I'm navigating for two weeks versus six months. Mm -hmm. And so when you get that low, it really is making a commitment to figuring you out. Nobody fucking wants to figure themselves out. But you expect to, again, this is where I say the marketing is bullshit. You expect to not know who you are, to not know what you love, to not know what you like, to not know what works for you. You expect to not know any of that shit, but you are supposed to get with this person who is going to automatically know all these things because they love you and they like you and they are supposed to fix all of the things that are wrong with you. And then you get really frustrated and pissed off when... You get the man or the woman, if that's your thing, you, you get or the they. or or them or the they, <laughs> you get the person, the human, <laughs> when you get the human and then you get the tiny humans, because let's say you want tiny humans as well. You get the house, you get the car, you get the promotion, you get all the things and you're still fucking miserable. Right. And it's like, what just happened? Why aren't I happy yet? And it's because you cannot buy your way. You cannot fuck your way. You cannot travel your way. You cannot, you can't sleep your way into wholeness and fulfillment. You have to get really, really intentional about discovering who am I? 
why was I created, what value do I add, and what is the purpose that I know I was literally, you know, it was embedded in me. What is that purpose and how will I fulfill that? Why do you think it takes somebody and... I'm speaking from experience. You and I coach multiple people. Mm -hmm. And usually it takes something dramatic. Catastrophic Right, for like a turnaround to happen. Even though you hear the advice of people who have found themselves who have become intentional about Mm -hmm. the way that they move. And they talk about the magic, right, that (laughs) that happens and the freedom and the surrendering and all the things. But we still need something crazy to go down back up against the wall (laughs) hands behind behind our back for us to say okay now i gotta do something i'm gonna be a little baby that's gonna listen right like now's the time (laughs) yes now that shit hit the fan now i gotta do it like now i'm gonna turn around and listen how can we avoid that like how can people like why is that like why we gotta wait until we're completely down for us to really be intentional about our blow up Because we're busy. And for many of us, Mm -hmm. we live in societies that require us to work our ass off to provide a a lifestyle. And I'm not even talking about fancy, fancy. I'm talking about, you know, just the standard. Like baby six figures. Yeah, the baby (laughs) six figures. And if you think about it, most of America doesn't even make that. So if we be honest. Only 10% of the country does. Literally. So let's say... To hit 50,000. Like, we're not even going. Can we talk about this for a second, though? Girl, only, yes, we can. Because, all right, so only 10% of the country is six figures. You know on what percent men make that six figures? Hmm. I already know you finna tell me. <laughs> it's about 3 to 4%. That's where we at for the fellas. So with this whole marketing expectation and all of that, it was a reality check, I think, for a lot of women to know that, hey, listen, it's a small little crew to pick from if you even want baby six figures. Don't even get me started (laughs) on like 1%, you know? And so here's my thing. I always challenge women who say, oh, it's not enough men out here. It's not enough da-da-da-da-da. Travel. Get out of your neighborhood. Get out of your neighborhood, go to another country, expand your world view, expand it. And also to expand your expectation of what the man has to be. Right. Now, I know for me what my requirements are, but my requirements don't have to be your requirements. And it is OK to say, hey, I prefer a man who handles things or I'm OK with building with a partner. Is he kind? Is he generous? Because you can date a rich one and he'd be selfish. Mm-hmm. And to me, that's far worse than dating a man who's still trying to figure himself out. But he's willing to give you the sun, the moon, the stars um, and everything and in between. Sky, what was that song? Listen, uh, uh, don't make me lie, child. I'll be, be, <laughs> be forgetting lyrics, y'all. But you really want you want a a partner who's going to be willing to invest in who you are so that y'all can grow together. And I'm not saying I don't believe in building. I'm not this ain't build a bear. I'm not with I'm not with that. Mm -hmm. I am okay, and I am accepting and willing of a person who is already in motion. And then when we get together, we I mean, blow it out the park because we're already both in motion. I'm not build a bear. I'm not about to take a piece here, a piece here. Oh, you're not doing nothing, but you finna connect into me, and we ah absolutely not pick somebody else to do it. Mm -hmm. But I think the reason, uh, like I said, to, to, to answer your question, or even about the there's not a lot of people. Expand your world, expand your, your, your vantage, like your vantage point, Mm -hmm. expand it. If you're only looking at, okay, the people in my neighborhood or even the people in my city, I date internationally. Mm -hmm. If we keeping it a buck. (laughs) I can't with you. I date internationally. not with you. Okay, hold on. All right. We're going to get into the whole dating thing. Because we're going to keep going there because you know. Uh, (laughs) But let's talk about the professional side of things. So first, let's get back to the question about how. People have to wait. Yes. yes. They have to wait until shit hits the fan in order yeah. for them to. It's because we're busy. Shit. We interrupt our program to bring you this important message. Ooh, this is really good. You should know about this. So I don't know about you, but I've been known to procrastinate. It's Especially when things scare the hell out of me. The fear alone would have me stuck, overwhelmed, confused, and all types of self-doubt. And don't even get me started on the imposter syndrome. Okay. Okay. After getting laid off, not once, but three times, honey, I realized that the security blanket that I made up in my head was just an excuse because I didn't really want to bet on myself. The corporate benefits that had me in that headlock, girl, they went out the window once my job decided that they no longer needed me. Turns out that I'll save a whole nickel 
if I cut your salary completely. The truth is, the only security blanket guarantee is the one that you create for yourself. In other words, until you start a business, you will always be at the mercy of a company's headcount and you will never have complete control over your time, which means you'll be renting out your thought leadership and helping build someone else's dream instead of your own. If you've been waiting for a sign, this is it. Don't you think it's time you stop playing small and tap all the way into your power sis? Click on the link above or below this video to learn my three-step process, the exact three steps that I took to make the transition from corporate to entrepreneurship. And this is helpful even if you don't know what type of business to start and have only one source of income. And this is absolutely free. It is my gift to you. I want you to win. It's winning season. In fact, what's that? It smells like winning season. Okay, so tap in and I'll see you inside the training. Let's go. We're busy. We're busy. We're really, really busy. And here's the thing. We're busy with all the things. Mm. Whether or not you have kids, you're still busy as hell. You got to make money. If you're a single person, you're doing it 100% by yourself. And, you know, unless you got a little sugar daddy. And listen, I do not judge. Okay? That's, <laughs> that's your business, a sugar daddy or sugar mama. Because, you know, they the women's here. got the dog, the, got the I coins. I feel like they messing up the game. But anyways. <laughs> <Listen>. <laughs> <laughs> but if you're doing it by yourself, that means the primary responsibility is on you. Right. You want to spend time with friends because it's not it's not, you know, good for man or woman to be alone. Like it, we go through things when we are super alone. So we crave that connection, mm. that touch. There's so much outside of you that you want. And then and I, I hate to be this person. But then when you're looking at Instagram and you see the people doing all the things, which most of it is fake, like if we're being very honest, mm -hmm. but people are looking at the fake portrayal of someone's life thinking I want that so then they do whatever it takes to try and get that and then again why aren't I happy once they finally have it mm -hmm. and so I think for a lot of us and it's what I what I do with a lot of my um, coaching clients is, is I, I created this thing called leader alarms right and anybody can do it it you literally it's identifying yellow orange and red to be more intentional, you've got to figure out what is yellow for you? What is happening in your body? For me, I know what's yellow is when I can't be on time anywhere because I've got <laughs> because I've got so, <laughs> so many like balls that right. I'm carrying or mm -hmm. holding. I know that if I continue like that, I got a good two weeks where if I know I'm late everywhere, if I know I'm missing deadlines, if I know um, I'm not sleeping, I know very, very soon, again, I got a good two weeks before I'm on orange to where I'm now sick. My body sits me down. Mm. And now I'm so stressed out that I can't get out of bed on the days that I don't have to work because I'm too exhausted. So it's identifying what's happening in your world and in your life when you're on certain levels, a.k.a. leader alarms. When the battery in that smoke detector goes out that first time, the beep, you know, it's beep. Please beep. change your batteries beep. in your smoke Please, detector. Nobody does. I hate hearing it. <laughs> I really do. Anyway. Nobody sad, changes no. it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so like how do you live like that? But but you no, but you just answered your own question. People live like that because you're too busy to do anything about it. So that is how mm. we live our lives. We are too busy to recognize and hear the beep, beep, beep until finally your house is smoking and it's like beep, 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 beep. Like but you gonna respond to me. Mm. And so that's when you know you're either on orange or on red. Yellow is what is happening with you. What are the actions? How do I know I'm on yellow? Like right now, I'm on yellow. I'm on yellow. I know if I don't do something to shift, I got about another another week in me. I got a good five business days in me before I know I go to an orange to where I get sick and I get set down mm. by my own body. Red for me is I start closing down things. I start closing down things. I will, won't be able to take my daughter to school. I'll have to Uber her because I am now in a depressive funk. Mm. And depending on how quickly I can work my way out of it, it'll go anywhere from two weeks to one month. Mm, that is but that's knowing yourself. I know myself right. intimately. Yeah. But this that's a, intimate that's a, thing. That took some time for you to like yeah. get to know yourself and yeah. take the time out to mm -hmm. be like, what is happening to me today? Yes. <laughs> like writing it down. Like what yes. is happening right now? And honoring your needs. Like right. in the morning before I do anything else for anybody. And here's the thing. I'm so not perfect. Like this morning that didn't happen. Um, <laughs> that didn't happen this morning. And that's just keeping it a buck. Like right. this whole, oh, I'm perfect and I always do it right. That's some bullshit. Right. It's not perfect. I don't always do it right. But 
I say 85% of the time, because I ain't even going to play pretend with 90. 85% of the time in the mornings when I wake up, the first thing I do after I do some bed yoga or like some meditation, um, I will write down in my journal, what do I need today? Because some mornings I wake up and I'm just in a shitty ass mood. Mm. I don't want to talk to nobody. I don't want to be touched. I just want to lay here. Mm. And I allow myself to, okay, well, why you just want to lay here? What's wrong? What happened last night? What happened this week? Sometimes nothing happened. This is just the mood I'm in right. and this is how I feel. Yeah. Kind of like when babies, you fed them, you've changed them, you've clothed them, and they just want to scream. Sometimes adults feel that way too. Now, I'm not going to be screaming because, you know... <laughs> That's just, I feel like that's not socially acceptable. <laughs> girl, you get arrested in Dubai for screaming. Exactly. You can't even scream. That poor I was girl, like, oh three months God. in jail for yelling for in the yelling. street. That's crazy. But who? Listen, I'm going to need us to uh, <laughs> just start thinking there. Ooh, that could be somebody's business where literally before you go to another country, you could pay like $10 for a quick download where it gives you all of the, the rules, especially if you are a woman traveling mm. to countries who. You know, they're a little more strict on women with the laws and the rules and the things. But we need to know these things because, child, I would have been arrested, too, because I'd be yelling if you you bark at me, I bark back. Hello. <laughs> it's, it's, Hello. Our, it's in our DNA. You yeah. bark, we bark back. So let's go into the time management of things. Ooh, and also understanding yourself. Yeah. You and I were having a conversation and we were talking about how not to become a prisoner Ugh. of your business. Yeah. So let's talk yeah. about that. Let's unpack that a little bit because, mm -hmm. you know, I go back and forth with it. So okay. you and I are both entrepreneurs. Yes. You know, my business model is I help women start and scale up businesses. So uh -huh. I'm pro-business. Like, let's yeah. go, honey. Let's go all the way. <laughs> but then you see, you know, folks who have been in business for a while are mm -hmm. now saying, you know what? I'm shutting down shop or I'm slowing down. Yes. I can't take it. It's too heavy. It's not sustainable. Uh, it's not sustainable. And I toss that up to you not knowing how to manage your time mm, okay. and you not delegating mm -hmm. and you making the decision and choice to take on so much mm -hmm. instead of being intentional mm -hmm. about where you're spending your time, how you're mm -hmm. allocating your energy, mm -hmm. who you allow into your space, mm -hmm. all the things. Mm -hmm. uh, so... When I hear things like you're a prisoner of your business, mm -hmm. Uh, no shade to anyone who has felt that way. Yeah. I, we all feel that way at moments, right? Mm -hmm. Because it's a, an emotional roller coaster, <laughs> if you will. But as you become more intentional yeah. and more aware about yourself mm -hmm. and become a better leader, understand how to manage teams, all the things, I truly believe you are able to no longer be a prisoner of your business. But how can you avoid that? Like, how can you yeah. make sure that that doesn't happen? So again, again, the marketing, like we got to figure out how to start telling the truth. Right. And in America, um, there's this thing where telling the truth is not okay. Mm. <laughs> like calling a spade a spade is not acceptable behavior. And so... Unless you say it in a very nice, soft tone and you <laughs> smile, it's a little bit of, <laughs> it's more palatable. Lesser. Yeah, yeah. It's a little bit of a lesser blow. But yes, it is true. So entrepreneurship was marketed as this uh, freedom time. You own your own everything. You get to do all the things. You get all this money flowing in. And the fact of the matter is, is that is not the case for most new businesses. Most mm. of them fail. You don't make it to year, to year three. Mm -hmm. Fuck a year five. You don't make it to year three. Why is that is, again, because how it's marketed. For me, when you're saying you're not delegating, you're not doing all the things, for so many folks, they don't have initially the money to delegate. And so what I always tell people to do is, is again, expand your purview. Mm -hmm. You don't necessarily have to have someone working eight hours a day right. to assist you. You can have someone who you hire from whether it's an Upwork, whether it's, um, you Fiver. know, a Fiverr or, you know, those types of platforms. I think there's uh, some other things where you can hire like assistants and stuff um, for, for really low amounts. But the issue is, is if you have not identified and outlined all the things that you actually need to get done, not just the things that keep you busy, the things that help to right. bring in Movie. income. Yes. Like I was, I was speaking with a girlfriend of mine the other day and she was just like, well, I want my website to be ready. It needs to be pretty. It needs to be this. It needs to be that. It needs to be MVP, minimum viable product. 
That is one thing that white men and white women have done really, really well. Minimum viable product. You need the least amount that you can get to go to market to start making money. Mm -hmm. So I told her, I was like, you don't need a website. You really do not. I know a, a person who made $240 million last year. Website is a, it's garbage. A, it's garbage. Yeah. Super basic. I No, worse than basic. Okay. Garbage. Okay. Garbage. Because what they focused instead is on operationalizing their business to ensure that they have a steady stream of clients who trust them, who are not only doing referrals, but who are bringing them in on collaborative projects, like who are, they are ensuring that they can deliver and deliver well. Don't nobody give a damn about your website. This little pretty website don't mean nothing. Mm -hmm. What's your funnel looking like? How are you getting people from learning about who and what you are to then now coming into, you know, scheduling a meeting or or uh, having a consultation or asking for more information yep. or downloading your product or your ebook or your whatever? How do you get them from point A, just learning about you to point B to point C to now cutting a check with you? You know what it is? People worried about recognition versus revenue. Exactly. You worried yes. about the wrong things, but yes. entrepreneurship, the way it's painted, again, Is especially. You got to do it that way. Yes. And you don't. I do not mm. believe you have to be the face of your business. I do not. That is something that I just don't believe you have to be. Mm -hmm. The folks who I know who have made the, 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 the hundreds of millions, they are not the face of their business. You don't have to be. You do have to get strategic about what type of business are you creating? Everybody wants the fancy business, the business that they can take a picture with and it'd be cute. There are so many businesses that are not cute, but that make my homeboy this year will hit 1.2 million and he has a janitorial business where he literally sells janitorial products to the government. Mm -hmm. It's not sexy. He's not the face of his business. 1.2 million. I, I And I get it. There are folks who, who are like, no, you need to be the face. You need to do this. You need to do that. No, you don't have to. Now, if you want to be, hell yeah. Knock that shit out of the park. Mm -hmm. Get cute. Take the photos. Go do all the things because there's nothing wrong with that either. But I feel we have to show a much larger view of what is possible. It doesn't have to only be this one way because people was making money before an Instagram or a Facebook or a Twitter or a YouTube. Mm. These are great new ways. Like, don't ever think I'm saying, well, you don't got to do that at all. Uh-uh, calm down. That's not what I said. Right. It's a tool. In it's your a toolbox. tool. Yeah. And also you want to make sure that you got multiple tools in that toolbox and multiple streams that so that you don't have to touch everything. You don't want to have to touch every dollar to, to be able to make it because that's when you do feel like a prisoner. You just a glorified W-2 worker. And here's the thing. Mm -hmm. I love a business bestie. So don't y'all go out here quitting these jobs and these good businesses because I need to partner with y'all. So stay, stay in the game, okay? <laughs> and when I hit you up, be like, yeah, I want to partner with you. It's nothing wrong with it. But if right. you are saying you're going into entrepreneurship so you can have freedom of time, then don't set up your business to where it's you're now shackled to it because that's not freedom. Mm -hmm. And that's what I mean. And perhaps that's what needs to be doubled down on, right? Mm -hmm. Which is why, like, inside the Dare to Leap Academy, we literally teach you, like, the business fundamentals yes, and so structure yes. so that you have a strong foundation to actually bring in consistent revenue yeah. versus just gone with the wind fabulous and trying to wing it because yeah. you heard some guru yeah. on the internet streets telling you you should do this, telling you you yeah. should do that. And then you got the shiny object syndrome and you're going here and you're going there. You're not like sticking to a plan. Yeah. And Everybody, then it's feast and famine. Yes. So you go going through the things. And then two, that the operations of a business, I'm not going to lie. I have even struggled with that piece because I don't like that part of the business. Like, you know, ha having a, a business manager or having a bookkeeper or your accountant yep. to help, you know, are you going to try and pay your taxes, you know, quarterly versus mm -hmm. annually? Because baby, mm -hmm. they will come. It hurts. <laughs> they will come. My first year in business, I thought I was the shit. <laughs> right, I secured the most money I ever made in my 15 year career in corporate and I was already yeah. making six figures and I was like oh I'm lit like this is the bomb dog calm but I didn't understand the game on business taxes Yeah, so yeah. it comes end year 
And I'm like, okay, I'm lit. Like, my business is profitable. You got too my much taxable like, income. Honey, um, you got to write a check to the IRS for 30 grand. Mm-hmm. And I know that's baby in comparison to some other businesses. But, but it's not for a new business. Exactly. That's that baby. That could put you out of the game because you exactly. didn't account. Like, I tell people, oh, they're like, oh, I just got this $60,000, um, you know, check or client. And I'm like, no, you didn't get a $60,000 mm-hmm. client or check. You take 22% out of that. <laughs> right. And that's how much that client that is worth. Right. Listen, 22% of that ain't mm-hmm, yours. Mm-hmm. And here's the thing. You may or may not have to actually pay 22%, depending on what ca- type of accountant you have, what your actual taxable income is, right. you know, based on, you know, you but know, that's all the game. Things. That's the game that's not being marketed. No. Nope. Right? And it's that's just, the game that keeps you in business. It's the yachts, the jets, exactly, the pretty photo shoot. Exactly. It's the picture by the Lambo. Yeah. You know, it's the, yo. And I get it. I've done, I've done, <laughs> I've I've done seeing, that too. Yo, I've been seeing people go so far to get the um, the shopping bags from like Louis Vuitton or like Dolce & Gabbana and just the bags. There's nothing in the bag, but they'll take a video with the bag on a parked car in the street acting like they bought something from the store and that's their car in the street. I just... Like, but you know what? A part of me feels like if you see as a business owner, like this is what mofos are attracted to. This is what gets the people going. This is what's going to have someone go to your site and make a purchase. Yeah. I feel them. Like, I, I feel mean, them. I, I like, get it. I understand. We're all getting... We're all getting strung along one way or another, okay? I understand it. My thing is, is I go back to the sustainability and right. like what drives you. That's why you have to get super clear on what's important for you. Because before I got super clear on what matters to me and what's important to me, I used to think that that's what was hot too. Right. And so I would do my best to try and like get that too. And it's like, for me now, I don't even like that. I give two shits about going to buy a designer bag. I got I got quite a few of those. What I want to do is take me shopping for some motherfucking properties. <laughs> take me shopping for that. You want to give me 10 Gs? <laughs> okay, bet. I don't want to just spend it on a vacation. Right. I want to spend it on an asset that can be income producing that's as passive as can be so that, again, I don't have to work for every dollar. Like for me, and there's no disrespect to anybody else, right. but for me... You want to give me 10 G's as my man or as, you know, whomever, or let's say you don't got 10 G's to give me, but you want to connect me. Hey, this person here would be great for you to work with or to become a client. That matters more to me. You just buying a bag or a shoe or a a fancy expensive dinner. And don't get me wrong. I like those and I'm cool with those, but that's not what's, uh, you know, most valuable for me. Can you connect me and position me so that I can make more of my own money or so that I can create opportunities that will allow me to grow? If you want to just blow a bag, cool. I don't want to go to a strip club and throw money at, at ass and here's the thing nothing wrong Girl. with the naked hustle if that's what you gotta do I am not sitting here in a seat of judgment because uh-huh, I live in a glass house and if I throw a stone my bitch coming down too <laughs> however for me right if you wanna blow money fast I got you slide it on over right. here I got something for listen you. I got this vending machine business that I've been trying to get off the ground I would love to hire somebody to just run that piece for me so that I don't have to worry about that and then that's a good passive stream of income mm-hmm. I can partner with maybe someone who is a veteran or someone who's blind because in Florida those are the people who get to have their vending machines at the rest stops like point me to those yes. people that's what I want I have this story for you so I have a mentor. Mm-hmm. Amazing dude. I asked him for a check. I was like, look, I'm working on this project. Mm-hmm. This is how it goes. This man proceeded to ask me for, well, what is the plan? What is your PNL? What is your marketing strategy? Like all the teams trying to like VC me up. Mm-hmm. Okay. But then he proceeds to tell me how he went to the strip club and dropped 10 G's because this girl was sitting in his lap selling a sob story. Mm-hmm. And I'm pretty sure that's and near the I'm amount like, that you asked for. He didn't ask her for a PL, he didn't ask for none of that. Right. Which is, 
<laughs> I was like, wow. It's it, a matter it of what crazy. people want to do. It is a matter of what. And listen, it's his money. He could do whatever yeah, he listen. want with it. But I just found that so interesting that. <laughs> and then they'll tell you to your face how they blow money fast. And it's like. And then it's the expectation. To me, that's why I don't be giving up coochie all the time. Because <laughs> so you're you telling me you going to go and blow five G's with the chick that you are only going to see once or twice a month when you go to the strip club. But I ask you to invest in something for me because it's what I want to do. But you expect to sleep with me? Uh-huh. Absolutely not. <laughs> Gotta be smart out here, ladies. Listen. Gotta be smart out here. Listen. And the less you give, the more they give. So, baby. <laughs> baby. Oh, we dropping all types of gems today. Baby, legs is closed and crossed. And this is not a morality thing. This ain't got shit to do with morals. This got to do with common sense. <laughs> <laughs> this ain't about morality. This is about, baby, you want him to, to invest in ensuring. I, I always say the men in my life... They are obsessed and excited to aid in my growth and happiness. That is literally one of my mantras. All the men in my life are obsessed and excited to aid in, in my growth and happiness. I love that. That's love the energy. That. That's the affirmation for all of y'all out there. <laughs> Affirm it. Say it often. Yes. Put a post-it on your mirror. Let's Listen. go. Listen. And if I'm dating a guy who is not excited or obsessed in, my, in, in, in aiding in my growth and happiness... He doesn't get to stay. Mm -hmm. He doesn't get to stay. Because I understand, like, listen, like, yo, I'm a good damn time. And mm -hmm. I'm not talking about sexually. I'm talking about energetically. I'm talking about business-wise. I'm talking about having fun. Like, I'm a good time. I, I know I bring value and I add value. And there's so much goodness and richness that you get from allowing me to be connected to you. So if you don't know how to appreciate the blessing. Right. I don't care how fine you are. Yes, it's it's difficult, but it must be done. Listen, it's, it's not it's, difficult it's for me It's that self-discipline training. I'm so disciplined. <laughs> I feel like professional women, and here's the thing. Again, this is not about morality because I'm not the morality police. This is always about what what is your desired outcome? Strategy. It's, it's the, the strategist strategy. in me. What is your desired <laughs> outcome? Right, right, right. If you only want to have fun with this person, then, hey, yo, sis, live your best life. But if you know you want more, you have to see what makes this person tick. What excites them? How did the stripper get him to drop 10 bands and I couldn't? What was it? Okay, you don't want to know about my business idea. You want to know how you can save me because I'm a damsel. Okay, mm -hmm. that's fine. Mm -hmm. Cool. <laughs> sure. <laughs> I got actual truths that are painful, that are hurtful, <laughs> that, you know, I've grown through and helped me through. Sure, you want to hear the sob story, but it's learning, too, and being super, um, super open and listening to them to see what makes this person tick? What drives this person? Because you are going to treat me as if this is some VC project or you're making an, an investment that you mm -hmm. want ROI on. When he gave her that 10 bands, he didn't even want no return on investment. Okay. Okay, he wasn't worried about no ROI. He wasn't. He wasn't worried about no he ROI. Wasn't. So that means I need you to do the same for me. You know what? And this is actually something that we should all keep in mind. It might seem exhausting to be strategic, so so strategic in your dating life. But if you really think about it, there that's a skill set that is transferable to your business. It show it because <laughs> you're gonna be selling and trying to get buy-in for your business mm -hmm. all the time. Like that's your yeah. main role as CEO, business development, business collecting the checks, honey. Development. Getting buy-in, creating relationships, yes. partnerships, getting a so, good strong pipeline of leads. Exactly. Like. Good strong pipeline of leads. Like there's so many transferable skills mm -hmm. if you choose to really like be more strategic yes. and intentional. Listen, girl, in your dating life. <laughs> I created an entire dating course. It's called Dating Well AF. And in, in Dating Well AF, because something that happens when women start liking somebody um, and the chemicals, once the chemicals start chemicaling, all common sense goes out the freaking window. Yes. All the things that we said we are not going to do are non-negotiables. This is not what I do or accept. The moment you like somebody, it's like, well, you know, no, baby, it is not a non-negotiable if it changes or adjusts depending on how much you like somebody. It's mm -hmm. a preference. And that's cool. But again, let's call a spade a spade. 
we're not calling an apple an orange. We're calling a spade a spade. Right. So in the and this is this is free. Like grab it, get it, enjoy yourself. We created a Where can scorecard. they go get it? Oh, datingwellaf.com. Okay. So go ahead and go there. It's free. It's a scorecard that allows you to download it and it's a weighted scorecard. Mm. So again, I believe in dating multiple people at a time. Mm -hmm. Dating, not sleeping with, not having sex with, not sucking and fucking. Dating. Right. Getting to know people. Mm Mm-hmm. And so when you start to really, you know, not even really, but when you start to like somebody or of all the people that you're dating, once the chemicals start chemicaling, shit change for us. So to help us not to do that, you literally can put, you know, whatever the little, let's say his name, Johnny. There's a way to scorecard. There's over 40, uh, 40 elements and items that you can pick from that matter most to you. And then you get to put what weight does this 50 percent? This matters so much to me. It's 50 percent. This other one is 10. Another one's five, whatever, whatever. Whatever your 10 are, once you get to 100, and you don't even have to do the math. It does the math for you. It's mm-hmm. an Excel it's an Excel sheet. Then you get to now score them 1 to 10. On a scale of 1 to 10, how much in alignment are they to the things that you say matter most to you? Right. And then it spits you out a score. If sometimes it's 4.2, sometimes it's 8.6. So that you can make decisions that are in alignment with what you say you want. It tells you how close is this person to say what I really, really want. If you know someone who um, spends quality time with you is really, really valuable for you and it's 30 percent on your weighted scorecard. But this person is always so busy and they can never spend time with you. And it's a two on a scale of one to ten. That's going to bring your whole score down because they can't provide or give you what matters most to you. Mm, interesting. So we really measuring out here. All of our engagements, yes. super important. So let's go into the Talk That Talk segment because yes. I want to make sure we fit this in because, you know, Talk That Talk, we talk about things that are taboo in the yes. culture. <laughs> and we were talking about how women are perceived as valueless uh, unvaluable. Um, is it unvaluable? Invaluable? Unvaluable. Unvaluable. Or Un- we anywho, don't know, y'all. You get what we trying to you say. You know what we trying to say. <laughs> you can be smart and still not know which words to use. Okay. 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 Here we go. Um, just women are less than mm-hmm. if they're not having children. Yeah. And you and I have had many conversations about the lies. The lies. And the the way we are marketed to as women around Mm. motherhood. Mm -hmm. So let's talk a little bit about the falsehood around motherhood. Because you keep it all the way a buck when it comes to motherhood. And I I love that. Because there's just too many dreams being sold out here. Selling us dreams. Dreams. It's like, and then you want to take away our ability to take care of it if we, you know, if we happen to slip up and, you know, we get pregnant and we know like, okay, this isn't what I want for myself. But um, the way motherhood is, again, marketed in America, it's, it's beyond trash. In many other countries, things are done communally where you have multiple generations in a home. Uh, it's not just the the central mother and father. And it's so funny. I've literally been saying this for years, and I heard Michelle Obama say it the other day where she was just like, it is not, it's not possible to just have a mom and a dad trying to raise some kids. And then, dear God, if you go down to single motherhood, it's trash. Like, it is the most ghetto. I, the worst motherhood is so hard and so challenging and i'm not saying it's not also beautiful and good and all the things but you don't like motherhood i don't i'm not a fan i'm not a fan and you're a mama yeah and i love her and here's the thing people like oh because i say i don't like motherhood i'm mean to my child man fuck you i (laughs) no disrespect i I mean that in the most respectful way possible respectfully that's the warm tea and the hennessy right there. yeah (laughs) like respectfully but fuck you like I make sure I'm so intentional with how my child is raised, like so incredibly intentional, ensuring that I honor and provide for her what she needs emotionally, what she needs physically, right. making sure she feels you safe. You do what you need to do Listen, as a mom. But because I'm so dedicated to ensuring that I am a damn good parent, motherhood is shitty for me because I know I'm going to do whatever it takes to make sure this child has everything that she needs and most of what she wants. Mm-hmm. Everything she needs and most of what she wants. And that means there's so much that, honestly, it weighs on me. 
in ways I mean. And I have a dope village, like an amazing one. My sister lived with me for nine and a half years. Um, my my dad lived with me for off and on for like, I think, four or five years. Like I have an amazing village, but it is still incredibly challenging. The pressure, the responsibility, um, the requirements, the expectations. Like for me, we don't do fast food at all don't like it no disrespect to those who do it's not healthy for you the way america tries its best to keep us sick is a problem for me so that means i cook a lot do you know how much it takes and my kid is by the way she throws it down in the kitchen (laughs) i've had the pleasure it's like i like (laughs) that stuff yeah like so for me, motherhood is kind of trashy because what, four or five hours out of my day, I'm on the road taking my daughter to places. She's an award winning competitive gymnast. And again, I'm that mom. I'm taking her to the things. I'm sitting at the practice sometimes because the driving back and forth is a lot. Like I put a whole lot into my child because parenthood matters so much to me. But I absolutely dislike motherhood because the level of support that we have in America is some bullshit. Mm. It's some bullshit. Mm -hmm. And then you get mad if I say something about it. So you mean I'm just supposed to let this whole motherhood experience beat me to hell up and I'm just supposed to smile through it like, oh, my God, it's just so great and so fulfilling. It No, it don't. It don't fulfill me. Mm. That that, it doesn't. I'm I love her. I put the best into her and I still don't like motherhood. Mm. So what do you think about society placing value on motherhood in terms of a woman is is less than less than where she's crazy if she doesn't have kids right by like what's point. wrong with her like, yeah like oh is something wrong with her if right. she don't have this by this time right like her role is to produce it's to produce i feel like that's some bullshit we interrupt our program to bring you this important message oh this is really good you should know about this so i don't know about you but i've been known to procrastinate it's Especially when things scare the hell out of me. The fear alone would have me stuck, overwhelmed, confused, and all types of self-doubt. And don't even get me started on the imposter syndrome. Okay. Okay. After getting laid off, not once, but three times, honey. I realized that the security blanket that I made up in my head was just an excuse because I didn't really want to bet on myself. The corporate benefits that had me in that headlock, girl, they went out the window once my job decided that they no longer needed me. Turns out that I'll save a whole nickel if I cut your salary completely. The truth is, the only security blanket guarantee is the one that you create for yourself. In other words, until you start a business, you will always be at the mercy of a company's headcount and you will never have complete control over your time, which means you'll be renting out your thought leadership and helping build someone else's dream instead of your own. If you've been waiting for a sign, this is it. Don't you think it's time you stop playing small and tap all the way into your power sis? Click on the link above or below this video to learn my three-step process, the exact three steps that I took to make the transition from corporate to entrepreneurship. And this is helpful even if you don't know what type of business to start and have only one source of income. And this is absolutely free. It is my gift to you. I want you to win. It's winning season. In fact, what's that? It smells like winning season. Okay, so tap in and I'll see you inside the training. Let's go. And it's, mm-hmm. a, it's unnecessary pressure because every person is not meant to be a parent. Like I know I can't have a whole bunch of kids because y'all gonna have to call the people on me and put me <laughs> in one of the padded rooms. I'm I'm dead ass. I, growing them from babies? Oh, no, no, no. And here's the thing. I fuck with teenagers. Oh, I love teenagers. Mm-hmm. The, 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 the age that most people can't stand. Oh, my gosh. I love teenagers because you have so much power to be able to impart wisdom, knowledge, Knowledge, understanding, give them tools, give them access to create and build whatever lives they want. But when you got babies, ugh, your entire existence is based off of what I do. It's too much pressure. Mm-hmm. It's too much pressure. And I don't feel bad when I say it. It's like you got to choose your pressure. You got to choose gonna your pressure. You're going to be under pressure in motherhood and you're going to be under pressure if you choose not to have kids. Yes. And it's okay if that is your choice. Mm-hmm. I do not understand why women are... Ma- I do understand, actually. Um, but... It's I don't think women should take that and 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 embody it like to, to bring it in. It's uh, one of uh, she don't know it yet, but she my mentor. Hey, Nicolette. Um, <laughs> but she said, you know, feedback is a gift. You can choose whether or not you want to open it. Mm. You get to choose. And so for the folks who are like, oh, well, something must be wrong with her because she don't have kids yet or she didn't do this. No, it could have just been she didn't want to do that. 
because it does require you to step outside of you to consistently and constantly think about someone who is not you. And if you are not good at delegating or you, you know, once the child gets here, you care so much about doing it your way and your right. way only, it's going to be much harder for you. Mm -hmm. And it's OK to say, I don't want that. Right. I don't want to go through having to cut myself open. I don't want to go through having my butthole be <laughs> split crazy. I just don't want my body to go through it all. Jeez. And that doesn't happen to everybody, right? right? Like Some people it doesn't happen to, but it can literally be a, I just don't want to be responsible for somebody else. And that you get too. to say that. You get to like, say Like, I it. don't understand why there's such a resistance in telling your truth. Mm -hmm. You get to say that, hey... I love children, but I don't want to be responsible for one. You can also say, you know what? Children get on my goddamn nerves. I'm good. Exactly. <laughs> Both are right. okay. Exactly. It doesn't mean you are a terrible person. As long as you are not intentionally trying to harm the children. Now, there we got to draw the line. Don't y'all be touching <laughs> these people, these people yes, kids. Exactly. As long as you're not intentionally trying to harm <clears throat> children and you're just honoring your truth. Like, I love kids. I'm great with kids. Like, oh, my gosh. I just love, you know, getting them and playing with them and then giving them back to their parents. Oh, they're blah. See you, See you later. Time. So, Alicia Reese, this has been amazing. Oh, we had a good time. Thank you so much for always yes. keeping it a buck. Super Absolutely. authentic. And by you doing it, it gives other women permission to do the same yes. for the fellas as well. Own your truth. Be comfortable in your skin. Do the work yes. that do you work. need to do to find yourself and find what does make you happy and what actually helps you move and groove so that when you're put in challenging situations, you know how to respond mm -hmm. more thoughtfully. Yes. versus being reactionary all the time because we know what happens yes. in those instances. So tell the people where they can find you. You can stay connected with me all over Beyonce's internet at Alicia <laughs> Reese. And Alicia is spelled hella different because my parents got extra excited. It's A-L-E-C-H-I-A last name Reese, R-E-E-S-E. -E. Um, you can go to any of my websites. I will only give you one because dear Lord, it's a lot of them. <laughs> um, you can either go to the link in my bio on Instagram or visit triggeredafpodcast.com and you will literally have access to all the things thank you mama for being here of course thank you all right yay hey guys if you enjoyed this video i'm pretty sure you're gonna love the next one so make sure to click right here and tap in to the next episode